Hello there, I'm Simon. Um, I'm here to show you around your motorhome. Um, so you get two sets of keys. Um, you see, your keys have got the uh, the remote buttons on them. Um, so we've got unlock at the top and lock in the middle. Um, now before, obviously it was a motorhome, um, it would have been designed to be a van. Um, so it has got the unlock button still on there um, for the rear end. Um, this doesn't work though. Um, there's no central locking on the habitation door. So the key itself will fit the driver's door um, and the ignition. All the other locks are done from the habitation keys. So moving around the vehicle, first thing we come to is your fridge vents. Um, can't really do anything with your fridge vents. Um, if you feel like you need to be in there, you probably need to bring the van back to us. Into your cassette toilet. Um, so the cassette toilet itself, um, the flush on it works off the fresh water tank. Uh, so there's no chemicals or anything you can put in the flush. Um, the only chemicals uh, are to go in the holding tank. Uh, there's blue and there's green. I think the green's um, eco-friendly. Um, I will advise you have to use Thetford toilet paper as well. Uh, it's a thin apply toilet paper. Uh, there's floats and things in here and it stops, stops the toilet paper getting wrapped around the floats. Um, so the cassette itself, to empty it, you just flick up the little yellow handle and pull the cassette out. Spin the nozzle round, take the cap off, um, and there's a, there's a yellow button there to let the air in. So you just press the yellow button um, and, and your waste will come out the, out the spout. Now if you are in a situation where you find you can't pull the cassette out, um, don't force it out. Um, you'll need to make sure that the slider's closed on the toilet inside and we'll show you that in a little bit. Underneath here we have your grey waste drain, um, so any water that you put down the sink or the shower, um, it's got obviously another tank underneath uh, that will build up in the tank um, you, and then to release this uh, you, pull, you pull that out um, and then your grey waste water will drain out of there. Move around to your garage. So there is a little garage door stay here to hold your garage door open. Uh, so inside your garage, obviously there is a load of stuff that's uh, supposed to be in your garage, but I've took it out. I'll show you what those bits and pieces are in a few minutes. So inside the garage itself, um, there's a windy handle for your um, bed, because obviously you can wind, wind your bed up and down. So you just clip your handle in. Um, and then you can wind your bed and move it up and down to allow extra room in the garage for bikes and things like that. Um, you've got your uh, Ford toolkit um, in the back there as well um, and also there is a cubby hole in the back which has got your boiler in. Um, so inside this cubby hole um, there is what's called a frost protection valve in there um, which I've actually got one out so I can show you it off the vehicle it makes life a, a little bit easier um, now we need to know where this is for draining down the vehicle so at the back here we have uh, your awning handle for winding out your awning now your awning itself um, obviously it is called an awning um, but it's actually uh, a sun canopy. Um, so if it is uh, windy or raining, um, put it away. So to operate your awning, you get your handle, hook it into the awning itself. Wind the awning out to whatever position you want it at. Um, and then you've got some legs in here, which just pop out. And then nip those up. Obviously if it is raining or you're gonna use it in the rain, um, put it on the wonk so the, so the water can sort of run off. There is also um, a centre pole for this morning. So this is your centre pole for your awning. So whatever, um, however far out you want your awning, um, you put this on, it just gives it a bit of extra strength. So your centre pole will hook on, it'll hook on up there. 
and it will also hook on, the other end will hook on up there and then it is, it, it is adjustable. So we're just going to pause the video and we'll come back in a minute. So we've put the awning away now, so we'll just uh, talk about some of these little bits that we've got here. Um, so we've got a cover, um, and this goes over the front of the vehicle, it's like a privacy cover. Um, it's got um, obviously suckers on it that stick onto the windscreen. We have a ladder here, um, that is for your drop down bed. Um, we'll show you how that works when we get inside. Um, there is a bike rack um, that's obviously meant to be on the back of the vehicle. Um, I believe that it was requested to be left off, um, so we've just put it back in the garage. There is a carpet for in the uh, in the cab, and these are some extra cushions um, to make a bed in the um, table area, which we'll, we'll show you when we when we go inside. Also on the back here, we've got a reverse camera. Um, we'll show you how that works as well when we get inside. So round to the other side of the garage. Now I did say earlier, there is a frost protection valve. Um, it's just behind the pipes in there. Now the frost protection valve itself looks exactly like this. Now the idea of this valve is if it drops below five degrees in that compartment in there, um, the little button on the front there will pop out um, and that will drain all of your water out of your boiler to stop damage um, via frost. Now, in that situation, you can put your boiler on, obviously if you're in the van, um, put your boiler on, use your heating, get it above eight degrees in that compartment and the little button will pop back in. Now, for winterization and draining the vehicle down, we will need to do this manually. So obviously to operate it manually, you just twist the diamond, that pops the button out and drains the water out. Now the button on the front won't reset unless the diamond is back in that position. So around here we have your, this is your flue for your boiler. Um, you need to make sure this is uncovered all the time. 230 hook up. And in here we have our gas locker. Um, so inside the gas locker itself, um, you will just attach your bottle onto this, this part here, the pigtail. Um, these are left-handed threads, so just, uh, just, just take note of that. Um, the only way of turning the gas on and off um, is via the bottle. Um, obviously you can't travel with the gas on, so each time you travel you'll have to switch it off um, and then when you get on site, turn it back on again and pull the gas through the hob. Um, the same with when you're changing a bottle. So turn your gas bottle off, burn any excess gas off through your hob, um, change your bottle over, and then once you've fitted a new bottle on, turn your gas back on, um, and you need to purge the system by bleeding it through the hobs. This is our water fill up. We show you there's some gauges inside to show uh, the level on the on how much water you've got in we'll show you that when we go inside fuel fill up we're just going to pause the video again a second i'm going to show you around underneath the bonnet okay so i open the bonnet and um, the bonnet itself doesn't have a pull like a regular vehicle um, you actually operate it with the key so you put the key in, twist it one way, and then twist it back the other, and then the bonnet will lift up. So a couple of bits to show you underneath the bonnet. We have our screen wash fill up, um, and then we have brake fluid, power steering fluid, your engine oil top up um, will, will go in here. Um, and then over this side, we have engine coolant, and we have a dipstick here to, for checking your oil level. So that's under the bonnet. So we're just going to pause it again and we'll show you around inside. So inside the vehicle, this is your control panel um, for pretty much everything in the back end here. Um, so we have on and off over this side. 
we have water pump on and off um, this is for um, an awning light there's no awning light fitted on these so it'll just be a standard panel that they'll fit to many other vehicles this one will be for lighting inside the vehicle um, we have temperature inside the vehicle the external um, temperature I'm guessing would have been an optional extra to pay for having a, um, a temperature probe outside the vehicle which this one hasn't got over this side we have got our water levels so your tanks go up in um, percentage wise so S1 will be a fresh water tank and it says it's got 33% in there um, then if we press it again the R2 tank will be the uh, waste tank um, the, the gauges itself are made for three tanks obviously this one hasn't got three tanks on it um, so there is three settings but obviously only two of them will work the next button down if we press that it will tell us our habitation battery levels obviously the vehicle is plugged in at the moment as we can see it's on the mains um, so it is charging so it is going to lie to us about our battery levels the next one down is our engine battery so it shows us the voltage of our engine battery um, and it, that's probably about it for that that control panel um, the next one along here is for our um, Truma combi boiler and water heater uh, so it's a gas only boiler on this one um, fairly straightforward to use so there's a little pointer there when it's pointing to zero that's off the top one is just 60 degree hot water the next one down is just 40 degree hot water and if we move it round to there that's heating only and that's heating and 60 degree hot water the wheel in the middle is just your room stat uh, for your temperature inside the vehicle next along here is our control panel for our electric bed so to op operate your electric bed we will switch the key on and then we've just got buttons to move the bed up and down below that we have our fridge so the fridge is a three-way fridge um, so it works on three different power sources so that's your on and off switch you should press and hold to switch on and off um, the middle button here um, if we press and hold that we can toggle through which setting we want it on so at the minute that's flashing on 230 so that means we'll, we'll be using our 230 hookup the next one along is battery which isn't actually battery so it, it runs when your engine's running so it's actually running off your alternator and the next one along is gas to run the fridge on gas there is also an automatic function on the fridge so it'll automatically pick its preferred power source um, but just be wary uh, if you are using it on the automatic function there is a time delay from switching the engine off to it trying to light on gas there's about a 20 minute delay on it also if we go back into that and press it press it again once you've picked your power source you can select your temperature inside your fridge and then when you when you've picked your power source and your temperature if you press the grey button um, it'll it'll do its own thing obviously inside the fridge there is a little freezer compartment at the top here and a drawer at the bottom so this area here uh, the seating area itself um, the table will move so to operate the table there is a handle underneath to lock the table and move it around uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to move all the uh, cushions in here um, and turn this into a bed to show you how that lays out so we'll come back uh, in a moment so we've turned this area into uh, into a single bed um, I think they're called occasional beds um, so as you can see you drop your table down and put your infill cushion on the top um, so we're just going to put it back now to where it was and then we'll be back in a moment uh, so into your kitchen area um, we have had the boiler on uh, for a few minutes so I'll just show you hot running water that's getting pretty hot now 
I don't know if you can see any steam off there or not, but yeah, there's hot water. So moving through into your hobs, your hobs themselves, they don't have an igniter on them. So unfortunately you will have to use a lighter to light them. Um, so just turn it down, hold it down for a few seconds um, and then it will stay lit. Um, now obviously it is a glass lid um, on top of your hobs. Um, so please make sure that your hobs have cooled down uh, before you shut the lid. Underneath your hobs we have a little oven. So your oven wise, to light your oven, um, press and hold it, twizzle it round. And there you go, there's your oven lit at the back there. And there is also a light in the oven. So switch him off. Loads of, loads of storage in the... Again, more storage. And then under here we have your gas tap manifold. Um, so the gas tap manifolds, generally speaking, you can leave the gas taps turned on. Um, they're there generally for um, emergency purposes, so you can isolate individual appliances. Um, the appliances themselves are, um, there's pictures drawn on the front of them. So obviously that one would be your fridge. Um, the next one along would be your boiler. Uh, the next one along would be your hobs. And then the last one um, would be for the oven. Moving through into the bathroom area. In the bathroom, we have your, your toilet. Um, now, the, um, the flap on, on the front of the toilet to empty your waste into is, is around here. Um, obviously, if you can't get your cassette out, like we said earlier on, um, and you, then you need to make sure this flap's shut. Um, so to flush your toilet, you just press the blue button on there, um, and it flushes it for you. There is a little LED on there that lets you know when your toilet's full. Up in this cupboard is a TV aerial that somebody's fitted. Okay, so the TV aerial itself, um, you it, to, to use the aerial, you'll undo the wheel at the top there and you can sort of move your, move your TV aerial around. It will also tilt on its side. Um, I believe um, you would only need to tilt it when you go to Scotland. Um, but to tilt it, um, you just wind the handle um, and that part there goes, goes red, moves into the red. And it moves into the red to warn you not to travel with it tipped on its side. Obviously when you're finished with it, just winding back down, pull your aerial down and tighten it up. Now there is a, um, a signal finder on here and this LED actually changes colour. Um, I'm going to struggle to show you that today. Um, obviously we are inside um, so we struggle to find a TV signal inside. Um, but it goes from red to green so green is obviously a good signal um, and it, there's, there's amber in the middle as well. Now this is a range finder, uh, so sig a signal strength finder. Um, so generally you can leave that on the maximum. I believe the only time you'd need to alter that is if, if you're underneath a TV mast. There is also a little switch on the top of it for switching the unit on and off. So your TV itself is situated in the cupboard up here. So to operate your TV, um, you will need to pull your TV out. There's a series of buttons. You pull your TV out and then you have to swizzle it round like so. And then there's a little pin here. If you pull the pin out, the TV will drop down ready for use. The TV remote I've left in the, in the top cupboard there. I mean, obviously, like I say, I would show you TV on, um, but it's pointless to be putting it on because there's, there's nothing. We won't get a signal in, inside the building. And then when you're finished, just clip him back in and shut the cupboard. Just moving through into the back, obviously your shower area is in here.
obviously when you're not using your shower um, the door needs to be clipped closed especially for for traveling in the back here we've got wardrobes and cupboards up the top there uh, and one other thing I haven't mentioned to you is uh, about draining down the vehicle. Um, so to drain down the fresh water tank, um, I'm just going to have to remove the cushions again out the front. Uh, so we'll pause it and we'll come back to you in a minute. So the importance of draining down um, all the water out of the vehicle, uh, it's, it saves on frost, protect, fr frost damage. And also um, water, if you leave it in them, can go a little bit pongy. Um, so to drain the actual fresh water tank itself, I take the big red cap off um, and if you have a look inside there but in the bottom there um, there is a plug so you pull that plug out and that will drain all your water out of your tank um, once you've once you've done that remember to operate your frost protection valve uh, to drain all the water out of your boiler um, and also for winterization you want to be making sure your water pumps turned off on your panel and opening all your taps in halfway between hot and cold and open them up and that lets the air in and the water escape. I think that's pretty much about it. If you've got any other questions um, just give us a call. Um, like I say my name's Simon and um, thanks for buying from Camper UK.